My guest in Enimatayan today is Rob from Adeptus Psychonautica, and together we are spinning a yarn. Rob, it's great to have you here. Your uh, fellow YouTuber, your channel is all about psychonautics, um, psychedelics, and the uh, balanced view, the, the rational view on these experiences. Yeah, I would say it's it's rational-ish uh, because it's more, um, I, I'm not kind of completely, um, you know, discarding anything that doesn't fit into a text, you know, into a science textbook. Um, but really, it's, it's I'd, I'd like to think it's more like the human experience. Um, mm. And so I, I kind of think of myself more of like a, a storyteller, if anything, um, you know, living my own story, having these quite extraordinary experiences and then working out for myself how these fit into my story. Um, so, yeah, I'm really just kind of blundering through life and trying to make sense of it. Um, but yeah, That's I've always stories been big... are for <laughs> Exactly. There's such, you know, such powerful, you know, obviously, you know, they have an entertainment value. But I, I think that there's just this ability to sort of, you know, connect with yourself, you know, and see something aspirational in there. You know, it's like as a kid, you watch, watch some movie and you think, you know, that's me or that's who I want to be or I want to be like that. Or or even, you know, I think one of the things with a lot of uh, kids stories, particularly the stuff I used to like as a kid was recognizing like the, the, there's some kind of like, something slightly weird or dark in it particularly in a lot of like the older fairy stories so yeah I'm, a, I'm just a huge fan of the storytelling medium and i think that's a lot of what i try and do on my channel is sort of con you know convert my experiences into stories so it's a great meeting and uh, let me ask you what has been your favorite childhood story yeah, I mean, it's there's almost too many to choose from because, like I mentioned, I was so inspired by stories from from, from everywhere, you know. Um, particularly, in, you know, the age I, I grew up and I was growing up in the eighties, so the, a big part of my life was kind of Star Wars and stuff like that. But to, to answer this particular question, there, there is one that really sticks out, which I think, in retrospect, um, first of all, it was really important to me as a kid. Uh, but then looking back, I can really see how it's shaped where I've gone. And that was a, a TV show that was on when I was um, quite young. So I would have been in um, sort of first school, we call it infant school in, in, in the UK, infant school or junior school. And it was called The Mysterious Cities of Gold. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with, with, with the show, so I can oh, explain I... it if, you, if you'd like me to. Yes, please. Uh, I don't know it. It was kind of set in sort of... Um, almost like Christopher Columbus times. And it told the story of these, um, these three children who were taken to America, or one of them was taken to the Americas and the other two kids they found along the way. And it was basically kind of um, expanding upon these legends of El Dorado, of the city oh. of gold uh, that these that kind of Spanish uh, conquistadors were, were obsessed with. And so it blended together these kind of a very kind of like Indiana Jones esque exploring, you know, um, strange lands, but then kind of weaving in um, a lot of Aztec mythology, um, a lot of well, all South American kind of uh, mythology, um, also kind of the concept of like ancient um, civilizations of perhaps you know advanced advanced technology themselves, um, and all this kind of just this. Um, there's this kind of air of mystery of, you know, what was you know perceived to be in the Americas at the time of all this kind of just, yeah, amazing places, amazing cultures, something very occult uh, going on. And, and just these kids just having this adventure through it. And it was just, it was, for me, it was, it was just my favorite show at the time. It had this amazing theme song, which just like, yeah, it was, it was just soared. It was just a beautiful piece of music. And then at the end of each show, it would have like a, a bit of like a three or four minute segment of um, real life kind of like archaeology, like explaining that, you know, what, that the fiction within the show was inspired by, and it would show some of these, you know, pyramid cities and stuff. And it was like, wow, these like real places, these, these are, are, are things we can go to. So that was, yeah, that show for me was just uh, you know it just captured my imagination so much and um and then going through as i went into sort of later life when i was in a sort of a late teenager um 
don't know if you're aware of the, the author Graham Hancock who released the, uh, yes, the book course. Fingerprints of the Gods, yeah. which suddenly then as a teenager and you kind of you feel like you've outgrown a lot of the, the stuff that you look back on as childish. And then you kind of pick up this book and it's like, wow, there, were, there actually was something to this. <laughs> so it kind of all that stuff resurfaces because I'm reading more and more about all this, all this, these, you know, civilizations in South America, all the mystery stuff. And it's the religion is kind of woven into this, into the culture and into, but there's some kind of factual basis for it. And so then that kind of stuck with me through my kind of teens and early twenties. And then of course, as I get into my uh, later life and uh, well, I say later life, my current life, I should say, where I'm sort of um, really exploring more and more of psychedelics. Now these are woven into different cultures and there it just pops up again with, the, with the, uh, you know, the ayahuasca being the sort of and all the kind of medicine practices in South America. So that really, I think, I, I mean, this is one of the, I, I have spent a, a little bit of time traveling around South America and this was one of the, it just felt like a real closing of the circle that this, this thing that had inspired me so much as a kid uh, and, it, and it was pretty dark mm. cartoon as well. It, it had some, you know, it was one of these, I think before the cartoons become too sanitized. So it had, you know, main characters would die in it. And it was kind of like, it was, um, yeah, it was, it was just very real feeling um, for a cartoon. And for them to actually go and visit these places. And that was when I was, I think I went to first Peru when I was uh, 40 years old. And yeah, to stand in places like Machu Picchu and, and, and see these things, which were like, it was like a dream come true. It really was, it was just a, such a special moment. So yeah, that was a <laughs> rather long-winded answer to uh, my kind of favorite TV show there. That's, that's perfect. I mean, um, that's the story that captured your imagination and um, was like a, a red thread throughout your whole life. Mm -hmm. And I mean, Graham Hancock is, of course, also an advocate for psychedelics. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> um, well, I, th well, I think it's because of this. I mean, one of the things that I find so interesting and, and, and valuable about psychedelic experience, it is pure imagination. It is pure storytelling. It's it's imagination unbounded. Um, and what I find most interesting about them, uh, partic you know, particularly these these substances like, um, you know, the, the classic psychedelics, they do have a, um, a narrative element to them. You know, th there's often this kind of perception of, of, of these things as like drugs and that they make things mushy and cloudy and people are kind of, you know, not fully competent with them. But I think actually the opposite is going on. There is an extremely vivid clarity of like hyper imagination going on this. And it's fascinating it, almost to, to in a way that I, I, you know, you can almost doubt that this is you coming up with this. It almost feels like it must be being delivered from somewhere else because it's just such a unbounded stream of imagination and it and fully formed as well with a beginning and a middle and a conclusion. Mm -hmm. And it feels so resolved by the end of it. So it's a very yeah. kind of nourishing experience, I find. Yeah, absolutely. And, and sometimes they have cliffhangers as well. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I tell you, come back next time and exactly, let me yeah. go from there. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that's my impression as well. Um, like, stories are like living entities that uh, come in contact with us. And through these extraordinary substances, we can engage with them more easily or more yeah, clearly. Absolutely. Yeah. And also, I mean, also just engaging with ourselves, because I think this is part of, I mean, it, I think we all, you know, I, I don't know many people who don't like stories in some shape or form, whether it's book, TV or video game or, or whatever. Um, but I think we've kind of, I, I feel anyway that we've, there's a bit of a thread that's lost that people are, really connect themselves to these stories and realize that, that, you know, we are all a story. We are telling ourselves a story. You know, I tell myself a story about being a parent. Um, I tell myself a story about being a psychonaut, about all these things. And I think, but then we have, um, you know, some of these experiences that we we go through just as a result in our, in our modern lives or whatever, we just, we suddenly we just start putting it into this box of, oh, that's just real life uh, or that just happened. Or maybe that's just, I don't want to think too much about this. So we lose this kind of, um, this thread that, you know, helps us realize that everything is a story. But then when you have one of these bombastic, um, just, you know, psychedelic experiences where it just, it is framing 
everything through a story, every single part of you from, you know, the, the lineage of where you came from in the primordial suit through to where you're going to go, you know, a million years into the future, into like being part of the cosmos itself. It's kind of like almost like, you know, a song of storytelling that's just going through the whole thing in ways where it, you just cannot help but sort of, you know, tell yourself the story about this, like what is happening here? This is amazing. And, and so I, that's why I feel like it's such a useful experience, uh, such a helpful experience, because it can, you know, particularly in like sort of modern times as people feel lost or unsure of, of where they are, um, you know, what's the meaning within kind of life, then suddenly you can feel like you, you there is a, a meaning that you do have a place, you are, you know, the, you know, the chorus within this song, you are the pages within this book, you're part of it, you're a, you know, as part of it as much as anybody else is. And I find that extremely uh, yeah, meaningful and fulfilling and humbling as well, because, you know, it can also, you know, you, you can sort of realize, wow, you're, you're actually part of like a vast tapestry of storytelling here and all these other threads are going on as well. So maybe I, you know, need to pull my head out of my ass a bit <laughs> and sort of, you know, and just recognize that, yeah, well, this is a, a project, a collaboration that's going on and it's, it's, it's wonderful. I couldn't have put it better myself. <laughs> I make a living off oh, I've saved, I've exploring saved your job. stories, so that's <laughs> just perfect. <laughs> I think. Uh, I thank you, Rob. I think uh, we can leave it there. That's oh, it's my, okay. It's my just pleasure. A, just a perfect conclusion. If people want to find you, they uh, have your links in the show notes. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm looking forward to talk with you again. That's great. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity. It's really, it's been really nice. Thank you so much. The world is magically. <laughs> Ciao.